What would you prefer? An iron brew and an espresso with a dash of bitters? Or a beer that tastes like iron brew and a beer that tastes like espresso with a dash of bitters? Fuck is iron brew. Welcome along. Now, here's a question for you. Did you ever wish that you could drink liquid rust? Mmm. Well, luckily, since 1889, you can. Iron Brew, or as it was originally called, Iron Brew, is over 100 years old. And since Scotland's Bar & Co got hold of it, it's been Scotland's other national drink, after ten and whiskey. It is chock full of 20 milligrams per litre of Sunset Yellow and Ponso 4R. That's my favourite Ponso. They even released a special Christmas ginger flavoured Iron Brew called Crimbo Juice. I don't want to drink no crimbo juice. Now, iron brew is such a weird thing. I kind of like it. I've had it a few times before. I couldn't tell you what it tastes like. So, I went to the oracle of the internet. A Reddit thread about what iron brew tastes like. And here's what people thought. So a lot of people went with bubble gum, uh, which I think the aroma kind of is. It's like a really tutti fruity kind of flavor. Uh, they'll, they'll keep it secret. They don't want you to know how much bubblegum goes in there. A lot of the other ones, though, were a bit more creative. So you had things like battery acid, magic, blue... What? Water. <laughs> okay. A bubbling highland stream mixed with casual violence. In a good way. Girders. That was quite a popular one. Girders came up a long time. Taste of girders. Mmm, taste of rainbow. Orange. Salted bananas. Oh, I hope that's not accurate. Thistle juice. Love. Unicorn blood. Freedom. Diabetes, Ambrosia from the Gods. And Gerda's came up again. And Cream Soda, again, was a popular kind of sensible one. I think Bubblegum Meets Cream Soda is quite an accurate placement of Iron Brew. But it's so fucking orange. As I said, I've had Iron Brew a few times and it is pretty special. So when Dan at London's XL Brewing made an Iron Brew Sour for his brewing partner Mark, it was clear that they had to get this out to the masses. XL are a pretty new brewery. They're in Walthamstow, London, as I said, run by Dan and Mark, who have done every job that there is in the brewing world. They've opened up a brewery tap, but I don't think it could really blossom because of... Yeah. Now this is their Iron Brew Sour Cranky. Christmas with the Crankies. It's a pretty specially put together beer. So it's got no iron brew uh, flavoring or coloring in it. In the ingredients, it just says iron brew essence. But no one knows what that is. Is it Gerdes? Are you fun of Gerdes? It's been made to smell ultra like our uh, soft drink friend north of the border with a sourness to kind of trick your mind into combining the sweet, sweet aroma, sourness, tang. Oh, that's iron brew. No, it's a fucking beer. I picked this one up at Wording's Bottle and Jug Department. Let's get this iron brew sour. 4.4% in a glass. Let's see what it's like. Okay, so I thought as a little comparison, you taste test, I'd pick up a bottle of iron brew itself. 99p. Two for 198. That's just maths. So let's get this iron brew in a glass. Well, I mean, look at that. If that isn't Sunset Yellow and Ponso 4R, I don't know what it is. So there we are in the glass. Iron Brew from Bar & Co. Like fluorescent orange. Oh, am I getting a tan off of you? And that is the smell. I think it's really bubblegummy. There was some disagreement on the Reddit thread about it, but I think it's really, really tutti fruity. The bubblegum would probably be blue. Some sort of bubbleoo. That flavor's gone after 15 seconds, but mm, the burst of the juice. They still sell bubbleoo. And then the flavor of it. Super vanilla, just super sweet, kind of really artificially fruity. Yeah, vanilla, just cream soda, ultra sugar. Am I gonna go orange? Is that Iron Brew or is that Sunny D? I think that was Sunny D. Now I'm drinking that Iron Brew and I'm thinking probably what every Scottish person thinks. It's great, but oh God, I wish it was alcoholic. So let's get this cranky in a glass and see what it's like. There we go. Flushing out your guzzards. Steady on. Whoa now. Oh my God. There we are in the glass. Okay, so it's obviously not, it hasn't got the sunset the Sunset Cream, whatever that flavour was called, and Ponso Far R is not a f it's far, four hour away from it. So it's completely opaque. Uh, it obviously hasn't got that fluorescent nature that uh, Iron Brew has, but yeah, lovely. Dark orange hue. Mm, it's like well-made uh, caramel juice. But yeah, when you compare it to that, I mean, no. If it looked like that, let's give it a whiff. Holy girders. Oh my God. That's Iron Brew. What? So it's got that fruity vanilla, kind of a creamy, creamy vanilla pudding with shit ton of sugar in it. Oh my God. 
Oh yeah, I'm getting everything. I'm getting the unicorn blood. I'm getting the blue. Uh, the, the babbling brook with a small amount of violence. Oh, so many girders. Yeah, wow, that is, that is iron brew through and through. Let's give it a taste. This beer is breaking my brain. What on earth? What the hell? Okay, I've never had a beer in my life that's been so disconnected from its aroma to its flavor. Oh my God, it's so mellow. There's a caramel malt. Nice caramel sweetness at the start, a little bit kind of sticky, but then it goes a bit watery, fades away. A little bit of sourness. It's not as sour as I thought it would be. But I mean, in your nose, you're getting this like ultra sweet vanilla bubblegum, tropical Capri Sun. Umbon goes there again. On the flavor, it's as mellow as anything. Soft and sweet caramel, fades away. Nice sour dry finish. You go back wanting more. You smell it like it's gonna give you diabetes and you're drinking it like it's gonna, it's gonna hydrate you well. It's good enough to avoid the gimmick of being an iron brew sour. The smell is something special and the disconnect from the smell versus the taste is exemplary. That's an awesome beer. One of my year's highlights for sure. Pure theatrics of it. What a joy. Let's have some coffee. Oh, but we're not finished up there. Oh no. Sometimes after a long old sesh on the iron brew, you need a little pick me up. Okay, you definitely don't, but bear with me. So I'm gonna make myself a Cafe Goretto. It's a nice little Italian drink, a espresso topped up with something like Sambuca, brandy, other botanicals. Uh, you can do Amaro. Uh, yeah. So here it is, I made it earlier. But wait, that's not coffee, that's beer. This is Exhale's 7.3% Cafe Goretto Stout. Oh yeah. It's an intense stout with a really dark malt bill, whole espresso beans from Wood Street Coffee and an infusion of botanicals from Victory London Distillery. Who I think were there at the opening of their tap room. So you know they're best buds. So you know it's gonna be good. Let's get in a glass and see what it's like. So here we go, Victory London Distillery and X Ales Cafe Coretto. I should have mentioned on the Iron Brew uh, beer that on the back of both of these cans, there's a link to a Spotify playlist. Uh, you just scan that with your Spotify app and it takes you to a curated playlist by the brewers. I know for the Iron Brew one, it's it's full of Scottish bangers. Oh yeah. I think with the original one, they actually played the beer Rod Stewart throughout its whole fermentation. That's definitely true. Uh, I don't know what the Cafe Coretto playlist would be. I imagine it's, hopefully it's Italian cafe classics. Oh, volare. Oh, oh. So the ingredients of this one, barley yeast, bullion and brand new cross hops, coffee and botanicals. Okay. Just what I need after getting a little bit high profile of that iron brew sugar. Something like coffee just to calm you down. This is the worst episode ever. Burr. So there we go. Ignore what's written on the glass. That's a different brewery. But they make great glass. There we are in the glass. Dark as anything. Lovely kind of really frothy head. Fingers worth. Tiny little bubbles sticking around. Oh, it looks lovely in there. Doesn't that look great? Let's give it a smell. Oh, there's a grassy kind of Almost vegetal aroma there. A little bit sour, maybe? Like a really, really strong coffee. Very, very bitter. Not really getting too many botanicals from there, but let's give it a try. Cheers. Ooh, mm. Cafe Correcto. Mm. Okay, there is a really nice, quite sour. Yeah, it's sour. I mean, it's not kind of dryness or bitterness. It's definitely sourness coming through, but it's really quite effective against that really strong, it is a really, really strong, super intense coffee flavor very burnt. And then there's the, the sourness from those botanicals. It's adding less of like a florally note, but more like similar to a, a g &T. You know, you've got that dryness, almost tart sourness, just cutting through it. Nice and bitter, cut through that coffee. I think it's a great combination. Strong coffee flavors, dark chocolate, burnt roasted malts with a nice touch of botanicals to it, giving a a decent kind of sourness and bitterness to just to just ride you along so you keep coming back for it. That's another winner. God, these guys are fucking good. So there you go, a couple of wacky old brews from one of London's newest and most exciting breweries. Uh, let me know in the comments if you've been down to Exhale before they had to shut up with all this thing and whether you've had this iron brew and whether you love iron brew. What do you think it tastes like? Fourth Bridge? Rangers? and what you thought of the Cafe Coretto if you've managed to have one, or if you actually drink Cafe Corettos yourself. That's pretty badass. That just leaves me to say thanks so much for watching. Give us a like and a subscribe, and I'll see you all again very soon.